Hello, today I thought we could take a look at my new ensnare track, which is called Small Bonus. And this is an interesting track to break down because it's quite simple. Uh, I made it pretty quickly, but I thought it would serve as a good introduction to making chip tune slash fake bit music on the PC. So what I mean by that is music that uses chip tune sounds, so sounds from old games, consoles and computers, but emulated through plugins as opposed to using the actual original hardware. Uh, so let's play a bit of the track, which you can listen to elsewhere if you want to, and then we will discuss how it was made. It's there. Right, that gives you a decent idea of the track. As I said, it's probably worth listening through elsewhere. And what I tried to do there was just show you a bit about sort of where the levels are roughly set and also, you know, show you a little bit about how it's structured. So let's start off by thinking about the structure of the song. So the first thing that happens is this intro here. Uh, and what I'm doing here is just a very simple intro, verse, chorus. Uh, the chorus is kind of here. Uh, there's a little fill, a little bridge between the verse and chorus. And then there's another verse, another fill, another chorus. Uh, there's a breakdown or sort of middle eight section, and then a double chorus with a solo to outro. So this is a traditional verse chorus structure. And using that is something that I find uh, quite helpful because it gives you something straightforward to base everything on. And for uh, tracks like this that have a kind of big melody, it's kind of one of the best ways of presenting it. There are other things you can do. It's more common now in modern pop records to have a kind of drop chorus. Uh, there was an article on the BBC recently that referred to it as a as a pop drop. Uh, and that's kind of where you, you might have your melody in the build-up more. So you might have a longer build-up with a melody and then you drop into a more sort of rhythmic dance style section. I'm not a massive fan of that myself, I have to say, but it is something that you can do. So the first thing to do probably is, uh, as I said, take a look at this intro. So the first sound you hear is th uh, this one, which uh, I soloed it and muted my own voice. So I'll try not to do that in future. Uh, here we go. I will solo it now. And that is a, a very, very basic sound. So we go in here, we can just have a look at what that is. Um, this is, here we go, this is a plugin called Plog Chip Sounds, which I use for many of the sounds in this. I massively recommend this. One of the things that people have said to me about this plugin is they find it a bit difficult to understand initially when they start using it. They find it a bit confusing and they get a bit overwhelmed by all of this stuff here. I think the the best thing to do really when you, uh, when you start it up is to go to this control section here and then click on this panel here and go to Pure Chip. So Pure Chip will just give you access to all of the sounds, uh, the things that you basically wanted to get out of this plugin. There are presets and so on, and uh, there's one of my own presets kind of in there, but I would start with this and also go to the effect section here and just turn this effect to empty. And then you'll get the Pure Chip Sounds, which it, it is called Chip Sounds after all. That's probably what you want. So here I'm using this, which is a, a sort of vintage PC beep sound. Um, and it's it's pretty good. It has some kind of case sound to it. So a bit of kind of convolution case sound. Um, so I'll just play you what that sounds like on its own. So it already sounds pretty good without any processing. And here I've just processed it with this plugin that I really like. Uh, which is called Cassette. And I didn't, I think this is just the default settings. I don't really do anything here. Um, this 
kind of makes uh, it, it does what you think it does it makes it sound like it's been run through a kind of fairly rubbish cassette recorder and there's noise and other things so that's just to kind of give it a bit of a, a sort of vintage flavor so that's kind of a nice way to start then we come into this stuff uh, which is, this is a riser sound, and this is from Plogue Chip Synth, which I'll be delving into in a little bit as well. That's their kind of Mega Drive emulation plugin as well. And this, this is, <laughs> I cut my own voice off again. This is just a preset. Uh, I really like that sound. It's kind of it's got a bit of a Streets of Rage two vibe to it, and anything uh, like that appeals to me. So that's just a nice preset. Throw that in there. Uh, using presets is fine. You should definitely use presets a lot, especially when you're starting. Uh, making every sound from scratch, I think, is something that you can do as you get further along with making music. But certainly for things like this, where a lot of the time I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel with sounds, here I was trying to make a quick, fun song with recognisable sounds in it that, that people could just kind of play briefly and go, oh, that was fun. So if, especially if you're doing that kind of music, uh, presets are good. Here, though, is a sound that I made myself, and this is a little noise effect. Uh, that is a very basic sound, and again, using that sort of methodology that I showed you from uh, Chip Sounds before. So here I am in the... Uh, let me just check where that is. Yeah, okay, so that this is the NES emulation. One of the things with Chip Sounds as well is you have to kind of learn what these are, because um, obviously the company making it couldn't use the names of all the games consoles and so on. So they actually referenced it by chip a lot of the time uh, and, and other things, so like the SID chip from the Commodore 64 and all sorts of other things. But this is the NES, and you can kind of see that here in this silhouette. Um, and all I'm doing is you're just using the long noise wave here and um, doing a bit of a, a sort of rhythmic MIDI pattern through it. And you can see here the pitch bend as well on that, which is quite significant, is just bending it down and you get that really nice... That, that NES noise sound uh, is is one of the, the reasons to kind of use this sort of thing at all. So here it is again. Lovely. Uh, very nice sound. Here we've just got a little vocal clip that says ensnare. So when we come into the break. Ensnare. And this is another plug plugin. You can see where I go to for my, my fake bit things. This is Chip Speech, which is amazing. Uh, and it has all these different voice synthesizers in it. I don't know if I can just... So you can kind of, um, you put the text in here and then you play it. It's kind of modeled on Vocaloid, uh, but it's much better than Vocaloid, much more stable. Uh, and you can do all sorts of things. But again, this is a, this is a preset. Um, or rather, it's 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 just one of the the sort of default voices. I think you can. There are more complex. Yeah, there are more complicated presets and stuff up here which I didn't use. But you do have full control of these. There's even sort of circuit bending options and all kinds of things in there. But that's just what that is. I mean, in normal situation, I probably would have just rendered this out to audio. But here, um, I've just left it because it's not very CPU heavy and I'm lazy. So that's the entire intro, I think. <coughs> Yeah, that's it. Very simple. Um, I have these running through some delays and reverbs and so on. Let's just find out what I did here. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is just going through a fairly basic delay and reverb. So my my reverb plugin that I'm using a lot at the moment is this Eventide SB2016 reverb, which is kind of a classic digital reverb. Um, you don't need to use anything this fancy. I just I like this and I have it on on a ascend by default. Um, it's it's a bit posh for this, so you could just use a stock reverb. And here is a stock Ableton ping pong delay, which is an amazing amazing delay. Really really good. So that's all that's on there, and those feature on quite a lot of sounds in this. Right, so we come into the verse now. Let's start, uh, let's start at the top. 
Okay, so the first sound here is a little sub bass sound, and this is just very, very simple. It's from the any. Uh, it's from the NES or the Game Boy. It is from the NES again. It's a triangle wave, um, and it just sounds, it just sounds like this. Uh, it's actually going up a bit high there. Um, I, I might might have brought that note down, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so that is just completely raw, no processing, uh, and it's going into an R bass, which is basically a saturator, this is a Waves plugin, and it just makes it sound a bit fatter. So um, I shall play it with and without for you. You can hear that just kind of rounds it out uh, a little bit and it's kind of nice. And then that's just being very roughly side chained by the kick. Uh, just really, really quick. I mean, you could compress this or limit it if you have a problem with that. I, I, I didn't. I mean, dynamics wise, it sort of seemed okay to me. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty much a raw triangle wave, so I didn't feel the need to slam it through anything, but your mileage may vary. Uh, here we have a bass sound, and this is coming from Chipsynth MD. Now, I uh, do recommend this as well. This is really nice. I have only just started figuring this out. So here I was just using um, a patch from one of these. I think it might just be in uh, one of these sections, bass, maybe. Uh, yeah, beef FM bass, and I just really like the sound of that because it sounds nice. That actually sounds kind of messy. <laughs> I did have a nice uh, stereo widening plug on plug in on it, but I wasn't getting that uh, that width. Uh, the kind of big width that I wanted, so I just took that off and slapped a killer killer hearts haas on it, which just is is a brute force like delays one of the channels, uh, and it kind of sounds a mess. But hey ho, we're not trying to make the most polished thing ever. Let's uh, listen to those two tracks together. So the bass just starts off like that, very, very simple. And then here I add another layer, which is a little bit more exciting. So let's listen to those layers together. So this is a WAV bass sound. Um, and what, that, what I mean by that is it uses the Game Boy Wave channel. Uh, I put our bass on that as well, and I and I didn't shelve it. Well, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> um, normally, I would. I mean, let's see. Normally, I would uh, shelve some low end off this, but we can see we can see exactly what's going on here. Did yeah, that's just a mistake. I probably should have taken some low end out because it's it's probably phasing with that sub a little bit. But never mind. Does it matter? Who knows? It probably does. Uh, but let's look at this sound in detail anyway. So this is using the wave channel, as I mentioned. Uh, and what you can do here is just draw a nice kind of gnarly wave in. Uh, and then I'm using this um, pulse width modulation mode, which uh, just kind of beefs up the sound a little bit. I don't know even know if I modulate that. Yeah, I don't. I don't modulate it. But I mean, you you can you can modulate it with things um, with automation in live and create that sort of more dubstepy bass sound if you would like, but I just kind of left it raw um, to keep the, the bass ticking along. So that's the entire bass. Now, uh, and, and with bass, just before I leave that, I kind of like having it sitting quite low. Um, so the mixing style that I'm using from this is, is sort of a little bit similar to the one that Dead Mouse 
uses and, and kind of teaches in his masterclass or he uses it for some of his tracks where you basically have a kick and snare quite loud you hit a limiter at the end really really hard with them and then you kind of pull up everything behind those it's it's a fairly old school mixing technique but i kind of like it and it's sort of my default now when i come to do something pretty quickly so let's just look at where that's sitting <laughs> Yeah, so I've got my kick up here peaking about minus 12, and then and then this is down here. Kind of around the minus 24, like minus 30-ish mark. Uh, it, it really is very subjective. Like, you know, you could limit this, you could compress it more and, and sort of stick it down around here maybe, or you can kind of let it spike up a bit. I wasn't trying to make this sound super tight, super, super compressed or anything like that. Um, so just kind of having it sitting around there is is fine, I think. Um, so now we can move on to the kick and snare. These are just running on an impulse drum machine, and they are from, uh, I believe it's a Henry Home Sweet sample pack, um, which is called, where can we, can I see that? Uh, ECS kick, ECS kick. How do I find it? Show in browser. Uh, yes. Henry Home Sweet Essential Chip Sounds Volume 1. And I don't think there is a Volume 2, but these are really good. Uh, and this is cheating, basically. Uh, chip tune artists would normally make their kick drum from scratch in, in LSDJ. And I've done that. I've got a few kick drums that I've made. But these are just really cool. Um, yeah, they're just, they're just really nice. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, because I don't know if it's going out through the thing. But um, they do sound good. So I recommend picking that up. It's free. And you can just whack it in your track and it sounds good. Hooray. So I've got those. Uh, I don't think I did any processing on those. Uh, oh, a bit of R bass on the kick as well. Sometimes that makes it, if you have R bass on the bass, a little bit of R bass on the kick sometimes as well. can make it sit together. Don't know really why that is, but it, but it is. Uh, and the snare, just taking off some low end, which is kind of unnecessary really. Uh, didn't do any any processing to that at all. But as I mentioned, those are hitting the limiter at the end quite hard. So... That's kind of what's going on there. Uh, I did some fills, and that's what this is for, so you can hear that fill. Uh, so if we look at those, that just is a separate... This is just a copy of the snare here. Uh, and then here we've got a crash sound. That's just being panned around. I think that was from a sample pack as well. Yeah, it's just another chip tune sample pack, but they're very, very easy to make with chip sounds. You just get noise, put a long release time on it, and there you go. You can obviously do more interesting things than that. And I had some pan automation on this as well. Uh, how did I do the pan automation? Uh, did I do it with MIDI? Did I do it with... Oh, I think I did it with a... How did I do the pan automation? Did I do it in here? Yes, I automated the simpler pan which is quite an, e quite an easy way to do it. it. It's oddly hard to do nice pan automation in live. I'm not quite sure why that is, uh, but it, it is oddly hard. Panorama. Dun, dun. Yeah, so that's just, I just drew that in with this tool, left and right pan. Very simple. Again, easier to do in something like LSDJ on the Game Boy. You can just set the pan values. But here I did it with, with the pencil. Uh, coming down here, we've got some hats. Here are the hats. Very exciting and these are just chip sounds again what's this so that's long noise again that's game boy noise this time uh and here you can see if you go into this modulation section uh this gooey is a bit tiny on my on my screen i do apologize but you go in here and you can uh edit the amplitude envelope here so here i've just got a very short decay time uh sustain at zero and yeah just creates an, a nice little mini hat you can kind of pitch that around at will as well, should you want to do. A uh, very similar thing here with the open hat. Um, just the same, but longer. Uh, here I'm using the short noise. So this is a nice trick that I learned from the uh, watching video by the producer Matt Lang, who is a really amazing techno producer. I recommend you check him out. But he, uh, he doesn't use stereo spread 
very much. He mostly creates alternate versions of things and pans them left and right. And that can work really nicely. It creates much more mono, well, sort of entirely mono compatible uh, sounds that have a much cleaner stereo spread. And to be honest, if I wasn't being really lazy, I probably would have done that with a couple of these bass sounds just to create a, that smoother, that smoother feel. But um, let's just have a listen to that. nice um so that kind of takes care of the drums now we've got some other uh sounds here so this is an fm kind of guitar sound uh, i wanted this to be a backgroundy sound so i kind of squashed the compression really hard through this glue compressor to just take out any sort of like transients really on the on the front Uh, and, and sort of push it into the background a bit. I didn't want that to sit too far forward. Might be a bit extreme. Uh, and this is uh, chip synth again, and it's just a sound from the patch library. Um, this clean guitar sound, which I which I like. There's another similar sound here, which I used to double it up, uh, which I did want a bit more forward in the mix. But this is a kind of sharper sound. And I think this is a yeah, distortion guitar. So again, simple, 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 simple. Well, this is what I like to do when I have a new a new synth. I will use the presets first, and just if I find a preset that I like, I will put it in a track first, and then that kind of helps me figure out you know what what do I like about this sonically, and then when I kind of know that, I can get into it. So here I, I turned off. You go in and you turn off the stack option because by default the init patch kind of layers two patches together and I wanted more of a sort of traditional um, you know simple FM sound the DAC is on which is the audio conversion and this basically is a, is a kind of form of bit reduction um, and I I mean I, I don't think anything particularly is happening with that uh, but that's just on by default and it makes it sound good so those are those sounds. Let's take a listen to the lead now. Bit more going on here. Uh, this is a classic chip sound sound. It is, um, it's actually a NES pulse rather than a Game Boy Pulse. Oh well. Uh, it's, a, it's an NES Pulse uh, and just got the Pulse bits set there. Um, and then what I'm doing here is these little bits of automation are to create these little plucks on the start of certain certain notes. I uh, don't know why I didn't do it there. I uh, may have just missed that one out. but. So that kind of creates that clicky pulse modulation. And then if we go into the MIDI here, uh, we should be able to see Portamento. Now, the one thing that Chip Sounds is lacking is a legato mode that enables you to play two notes together and have it slide between them nicely. I don't believe that that's there. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there might be a new version or something that has that, but it doesn't, the one I uh, am using doesn't appear to have that. So here, what I do is I just, I'm automating the Portamento MIDI parameter, um, which you can do within uh, within Chip Sounds and, and, and just send MIDI automation to it. Um, and here, sorry, that was confusing. It's not that automation. It's this automation. I just create a little switch to take it from zero to whatever number that is, three. Uh, and I put that over the edge of notes. And once you create one, you can just copy it. And you just go through going, oh, I want to bend there, bend there, and then there. So you just copy and paste. And that creates the, the slides. So pretty, pretty simple stuff, really. Uh, you can do a lot more with this kind of um, pulse width modulation modulation uh, if you want to. So you can create sort of a lot more elaborate sounds than, uh, than I have here with it. Uh, I think I do a little bit of that here later on where I kind of, uh, this is like a little fast bit where I do it per note. But yeah, uh, I wanted to keep this fairly basic. I wanted it to sound like a sort of classic 
classic NES or NES song. Here we've got some chords. The this is just um, polyphonic uh, chip sounds with all. I just kind of made a mess here. <laughs> uh, so Sidewinder is just a stereo spread plugin I mentioned before. It can be quite subtle. Um, Yeah, again, this is a background element. I, I wanted it to sit back in the song quite a lot um, and not really bother anyone. These little pew effect sounds while we're here. That's just from the Soulsby at Megatron, which is a hardware synth. And this was just an audio capture I did of it making silly sounds. I just took a little bit out of that. Uh, that's a good technique if you don't do that, is to just kind of do some synth jams. If you have a synth that you like playing around with, make some weird noises, make a really long file, and then you can just drop the file into live and select little bits of it uh, for use later, something that I'm trying to do more of. And what else? So, I mean, that's pretty much all of the sounds uh, in the track. I don't think there's anything else really that notable um, or, in, or indeed anything I haven't covered. All that I'm doing for these more complex sections um, is just playing things in and then going in and adding some harmonies here. So here I just harmonize this section after writing the basic melody. That's all that is. Um, just takes a bit of time to figure out, you know, the correct way to harmonize something. Um, then something I did here, uh, there are a couple of little extra sounds in this in this breakdown section, but they're not particularly interesting. It's just another another similar chip sound sound here. Uh, a little clap sample, which I think is, I think that's the LSDJ default clap sound sample. Um, and yeah, and then just using the same builds and so on um, to kind of get there. But one thing I did do is this little melody here. I really like uh, when pop songs, you use this middle eight melody. It's actually a counter melody that works with the lead. So I used this same melody here and then I brought it back in this final section. So this... is the same as this as this. And it's quite subtle and that's intentional so that it doesn't just kind of stack everything up uh, too much. And again, uh, I think I was, did I do any modulation here or does it have internal modulation? Okay, so this is a little bit more advanced use of chip sounds. Here, um, I made this little table, which you can do in the wave sequencer. And all this is doing is it, it's just a little mini step sequencer. Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> it was on my other monitor. Here it is. Uh, it's a little step sequencer inside chip sounds. And you just get to this from the control section. Uh, and then here, you, you just you kind of specify everything that happens when you press a key. So the note comes on. Um, I'm sending these different values to the pulse width here. You can see that's MIDI CC2 and that's MIDI CC2 and the and the value. Um, and then, I don't know what that null's doing there. I don't even know if that's necessary, but maybe we can see that. Yeah. Eh, that's the wrong sound. It was the counter melody sound. Here we go. You can see that just automating that parameter there, which is kind of nice. So that's just another way of doing the same thing. And it's, it's a bit it's a bit easier to do once it's in the table like that. 
Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, this final solo, something I took a little bit of time over. And, and again, like this was, I think I just played this in slowly and then did some MIDI note editing. This is based on a patch I made. Ignore all this stuff, by the way. It's just a weird bug in live. If you if you open the GUI of Chip Sounds to map a controller to one of these sliders, it, it maps everything. Uh, it's kind of kind of annoying. So here, uh, this sound has a couple of interesting things going on. Um, basically, what happens is it has a pitch LFO that creates that vibrato. And all that's doing is you, you can actually set it all in here. It's really good. So you just set up the rate here, the amount that it's modulating the pitch by, and then this delay parameter, uh, it, it enables the note to come through clean first and then get modulated by the LFO. So you can just hear there's like a little bit of clean note and then that happens. So all I'm, all I'm doing here is um, I'm basically just uh, using that, it only comes into effect on these longer notes. So these little quick notes, it doesn't happen. But as soon as you have this, you get that me that vibrato kind of as it comes through. And I've got these little little trills and fills here um, that are quite nice to do. This is kind of a legato solo most of the time. You got the and then you have this which is kind of that RPG ish sort of little thing going on there. So that's quite fun to do. And then at the end, uh, that sound that comes in is just the same from the intro. I like echoing the outro and the intro. It's a fairly standard thing to do. So it's this sound again that we started with, with the cassette plugin and, and all that good stuff. So yeah, so that's that. So I mentioned the, the sort of dead mouse style mixing and mastering earlier. Uh, we can take a look at this mastering chain now. And there's a few things going on here. This is like super, super overkill for this kind of music. You really don't need to do this, but this is a kind of standard master chain that I have set up that I just adapt to things. So here we have, um, it's a bit of stereo spread. Uh, this is a bit of OTT, a bit of multiband compression. OTT is just good for squashing stuff and making it sound slightly harsher. Uh, it's upwards, downwards, multiband compression, which means it will boost things um, below a certain threshold and, and, and pull them down above a certain threshold. So it kind of aims to kind of squish things into the middle dynamics wise. And it tends to produce, well, this uh, setting tends to produce a bit of a, a bit of a sort of harsher, higher, thinner, squashier sound that makes it cut through a little bit. Um, then this is just a little bit of multiband compression on the bass, not really doing too much. Fab Filter Pro L, which is doing this. It's just really pulling down those those kicks and snares, and it's it's not doing a huge amount here. I mean, I'm really not using it in in the same way. If you've seen that Dead Mouse Master class, like exactly the same way he is at all. It's it's just some subtle limiting, and then L2 at the end here is just just taking the tops off really. If there's anything else that kind of creeps, creeps through, now something I started doing a lot more is paying attention to the loudness of tracks and also their frequency distribution. So here we can just see my voice going through this at the moment. But if we play the track, so this is quite a high shrill track. You seeing the, the bass kind of peaking up around here. There wasn't much of this lower sub end. Um, and then the top end here is, is quite high. So this is not what you would say a kind of nicely, super nicely modern mix, but it's using those chip tune sounds without too much modern beefing up that I've done on some other, other tracks where I kind of layer with samples and other sounds and so on. Um, but it, it so, so again, all of this is very rough, but it's nice to just get a look at these things. You know, I know that this is quite loud and I know that because it doesn't have a lot of these low frequencies that are taking up a lot of energy. 
uh, and it just helps me sort of cite this within other tracks. Um, I, you could easily do this quieter and, and not have it be a problem, or you could really go for it, like you could blast the limiter. Um, one of the loudest sort of chip tune tracks is Fox by Shurabon. It kind of comes out about four, minus four luffs. Um, and that's really really smashed loud kind of sound to it that really works for that track it works with the energy of that track this is not like a super dancey smash song so it's it's a little bit lower than that but still i would say reasonably reasonably loud in the grand scheme of things i mean it's not you're not into your minus fives your minus fours like some drum and bass uh your know, neurofunk drum and bass kind of hits can be around four or five so that's that uh i hope that if you are thinking of giving this kind of music a go I've used a lot of fancy stuff here, but you can equally do a lot of the stuff with with stock plugins. I mean, you really don't need to be throwing all of this kind of stuff at it. It's just things that I'm used to working with. And I, I want to stress that a lot. You know, if you just get Plogue chip sounds uh, and one of these sample packs, you can make a really good chip tune sounding fake bit uh, song on the PC without too much trouble. And there are free instruments as well out there that you can get uh, and free sample packs and so on. So I'm just showing you how I did it in case anything is useful or useful in another context. But, you know, picking up something uh, and trying it even with an original Game Boy, an LSDJ or something like that, or you can use an emulator, just this kind of music is really fun to work in because it's primarily about you're trying to hit a few specific sounds and try and get that sort of semi-authentic sound. But more than that, it's really about experimenting with more basic synth sounds and melody. Melody and, you know, your own imagination. There's some really good non-melodic chip music as well. Um, some really good bass music, like check out Mono Deer. He's amazing. He does bass music uh, on Game Boy's and really tries to take things away from that computer gamey aesthetic. Whereas I'm kind of trying to embrace that and doing a more pop oriented sound on some of my tracks. So there's a huge spectrum of different sounds within that genre. And luckily it's a very open scene and people enjoy fake bit stuff. They enjoy the super authentic hardware stuff, the very obscure kind of dark punky stuff. It's, it's just very open. So if you want to try making music like this, I highly recommend it. Please uh, do do all the YouTube things if you're interested in more of this and talk to me. And hopefully I'll see you again sometime. Goodbye.